Hey everybody, welcome to Local Business Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Case, and I'm on a mission to help you. Every week we're gonna be talking to local business owners and experts to get their best tips, tricks, and hacks to grow your business. This show's designed to teach you, inspire you, and motivate you to take massive action and start to build your future-proof business. Whether you're just starting off or you're taking your existing business to the next level, this episode is for you. So let's get started. Hey, local business hackers. I'm your host, director of global business dev at Referizer, Carl Case, joined today by the co-founder and CEO of AR Workshop, Maureen Anders. Maureen, welcome to Local Business Hacks. Thanks, Carl. I'm thrilled to be here. Well, we are beyond excited to dive in to this journey that has led you to this point. I know that you have had quite the career changes. Please give us some insight into who you are. Absolutely. So grew up in Michigan, graduated from U of M with an engineering degree, but never wanted to be a nerd or an engineer. And I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, grew up around entrepreneurs. So in 2010, after I had my son and I was staying home after a career with GE, I met my now co-founder, Adria Ruff, at a preschool open house. And within a week, we decided to launch a business together. So with 20 cents, and an Etsy shop, we kicked off Anders Ruff, which was a DIY party printable company. So we were inspiring moms around the world to host beautiful themed parties for their kids. And we didn't know what to expect. And so it sounds crazy because we were a weekend, but now we've been together 14 years. But Anders Ruff, you know, it really took off. It, it grew faster than we could ever have expected. And I think I attribute that to our passion for just creating beautiful things and making sure that we're getting it in the hands of everybody that we can through social media. So launched that in 2010. And about five years into it, we kind of plateaued. We had some really great opportunities to work with magazines and all these different brands like Universal Studios. And so we had a lot of great exposure and grew our following. And we just got sick of being behind the screen at that point. Because at that point, we were just online. We had a blog and we were teaching people DIY, but we were sick of being behind the screen. So we decided to kick off and launch a brick and mortar. And actually, it's kind of a, a side story. I launched in 2014 another brand, which turned out to be kind of a, a blessing in disguise. I ended up um, having a business divorce, and that is now one of our biggest competitors. So it was a great experience to, to learn from, which we'll talk about. But then it, it taught me kind of what I really wanted for the brand. And so in 2016, I pivoted and launched another brand called AR Workshop, which is a do-it-yourself art studio, which basically what we do is we empower and inspire people through creativity and we teach classes hands-on to um, create home decor candles wood signs all sorts of beautiful things for your home incredible journey i love how you went from corporate like the ultimate corporate america organization at ge and now you know being a mompreneur yes. uh, congrats I, i'd love for you to share a little bit how can people get involved with ar workshop what's the best way so our website is arworkshop.com. And one thing I forgot to mention is we launched in 2016 and in two and a half years, we had a hundred stores in 30 states. So we grew very quickly, Carl. And so people can probably find an AR Workshop in their local town. Just go to the website, arworkshop.com. We've got about 125 open. We're on social media. You know, we're everywhere. We try to be cool on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. And I hope we do a good job of creating content people enjoy. So Anders Ruff Workshop is our main corporate handle. But if you have a local workshop, they have their own channel as well. Amazing. Amazing. arworkshop.com, people. Maureen, yeah. let's dive right in. I know that there was some medicine that you were about to give us in your business divorce. What are your local business hacks and the stories that that molded them? Okay. I've got a couple. How much time do we have? We got time. <laughs> okay. So number one is trust your gut. So with my first business, <laughs> that's the biggest thing. So Trust your gut. The first business that I started is one of our biggest competitors. Now I'm not going to name names. You guys can research it. But I went into business with a partner that we didn't really know each other very well. And we just trusted each other and, and never set up an operating agreement. And so we kicked off and it, it grew so quickly. It was so exciting. We had adrenaline. People were interested in it. And it just, you know, sometimes partnerships don't work. And so that was a lesson because we we got pretty far down the path and had grown and we kind of had to just separate. So make sure you have your ducks in a row 
get a good lawyer. Don't take any shortcuts because it'll burn you in the end. So spend the money up front is the biggest thing. And, and, you know, if you get excited about something, just take a step back and make sure that you're following all the right steps to protect yourself. That's one thing. And then the second thing I think a business hack for me is when a big opportunity comes to you that scares you and you're like, I can't do this, just say yes and figure it out later. And so my story behind that is in 2020, we had to pivot we're based on in you know in person on hands workshop. So when COVID hit, it's like wait a minute, we can't do any of this. So we launched our DIY to go kits. It was our biggest march we've ever had, and we gained the attention of a huge retailer. And so this retailer reached out, who's also brick and mortar, and they said, "Hey, we want to bring your kits online." And I was like, "How are we going to do this?" They said, "We're going to do about a thousand orders a week." which I mean, we're based, we don't have a facility to produce that many. But what did Maureen say? I said, oh yeah, we'll do it. And so what did I do? I spent all day, all week trying to research a warehouse and source all of the materials that we would need to fulfill those orders. And it's been one of the most um, amazing partnerships because we have been able to expand AR Workshop to online, which gives more exposure to our franchisees and we're getting 33 million new customers for all the email drips where they're promoting this project. So I could have easily said no, because we don't have the facility, but you know, I literally found this little dumpy warehouse and we, we resourced and we just, you know, invested in it. And it was a really, really good decision. So don't be scared, say yes and figure it out. Rally your team, ask your friends, family, if you don't have a team, but don't afraid to be scrappy because you may miss an opportunity that can take you to the next level. That's amazing. Maureen, I think it's incredible how many businesses shifted during COVID and how many shut down. I just heard a story about a barbecue restaurant that the day that the world shut down, they went to Home Depot, built a, a drive through out of wood and really pivoted their business to being the, the, the only open barbecue restaurant in Alabama to, to pivot that way. And it's amazing that clearly this is still a fruitful relationship three, four years later um, and the, the data that you're obta obtaining from that partnership is incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I would love to take a step back and go to your hack on trust your gut. What are some things that now looking at as an entre as a successful entrepreneur that you would look for or definitely avoid in any partnership that you're looking, that you're looking to surface? So a partnership is is a big deal. You're basically married to that person. So when you start a business together, you're investing money, you're investing time, but really you are locked in like a marriage to that person. And you probably are creating some trademarks and a lot of assets and different things that have value. And you may not realize how quickly it can grow. And like us, it was something that we knew had huge potential and we didn't have the right structure set up. So I guess I had some friends and family that that had met the partner at the time and just said, are you sure you want to do this? You don't really know each other. Like, you know, get opinions from friends and family, talk to professionals. And if you just get this inkling that something's off, trust it. It may seem scary to back out, but just trust it. And, and you just have, I've learned so many times through mistakes. You don't learn through your successes. You learn through your mistakes. And while that was a, a mistake to not have it set up correctly, I do think that AR Workshop would not be what it was if I hadn't have learned through that experience. So, you know, don't have regrets, but definitely trust your gut, trust the professionals and, and lean on your support system to help you along the way. That's amazing. Intuition is everything for me. And I feel like every time I go back on oh my gut, it always smacks me in the face. Like, why did you do that? I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. 100%. <laughs> so Maureen, as the, the CEO of a now 125 plus location franchise, how is your day structured differently from when you had your hands in the weeds all the time to now I can imagine being more of a visionary or being able to work on the business instead of in the business. Yeah. I still love to work in the business too. I feel like I, it, if I'm relatable, I have more credibility with our franchisees, but early on, I mean, we were marketing. I built the website. I had the branding. We had the design photography. We were every, everything finance. 
like I said, we started with a 20 cent investment and we never ever took outside capital. We never brought on partners. It was it was very organic, just reinvesting in the company. But today I get to surround myself with an incredible team. I've built a bench of incredible leaders who are passionate about the brand. Some of them actually were franchisees and had to sell their business for one reason or another, whether they moved or decided to take a step forward into this position on a leadership team. But it's all about that culture and relationship, I think, that I've built over time and trust. And I can go away and my team has my back. And so one thing that I really focus on, Carl, with my team is I lean into their unique unique abilities. So I find that people are going to be happier in their role. They're going to stay on board longer, which we have a lot of team members that have been with us since the very beginning. And if they are truly spending most of their time working on things that are their unique ability that no one else can do, that brings them energy and they could work 80 hours and still feel passionate about it, then they're going to be with you for a long, long term. Now, granted, you can't do that all the time. But I've been able to align my team that way. So we are a great partnership. We lean on each other and we just have each other's back and we're the best that we can possibly be. I love that. Definitely something that we look at when partnering with a business or that I look at is their retention of their employees. Forget the franchisees and everything else. I think it comes down to the core culture and competency of the organization. So That's really in a testament to what you guys have created, knowing that you do have staff that's been there since day one. We're really blessed as well on my team. My average team member has been with me for over five years. Uh, And being a global company supporting brands over 80 countries, it definitely has its challenges. So congrats to you, Culture Queen, on creating that. And are there any tips that you have as far as maybe disc profiles or looking at personality assessments? Or is it just having a, a real, real deep conversation as far as what supports people and in, in what role and what motivates them? You know, we don't do any of that stuff. We are so not corporate and we probably should, but it's worked out well for us. We go back to trust your gut and I hire slow and fire fast. So I know people oh, yeah. say that and it's true. Whenever I've hired quickly, I realize later, why did I do that? And then you have to get rid of them because you're investing so much time and money. So Like I mentioned, it's been a slow growth of our team, but I've gotten to know these people because they've been involved in AR Workshop, whether it's a franchisee or a service provider that we recruited. But I don't do those profiles. It's more about, could I be friends with this person? Could I sit down at dinner with them and have a good time? Our motto is work hard, play hard. And if I see someone's talented and passionate, then and we get along, then I feel like it's a good fit. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Maureen, let's dive a little bit into your personal life, if that's okay. Talk to me what uh, CEO roles morning routine looks like nowadays. Okay. So I start off my morning helping my two boys, they're 15 and 18, get off to school. One of them eats breakfast, the other doesn't. So yeah, I'm I'm pulling one out of bed while the other one's eating my chocolate chip pancakes. So (laughs) usually do that. And I'm usually on a conference call at the same time or starting one. I go to Orange Theory because I feel like you have to take care of yourself. So I either do a walk, run, or, or do a workout at Orange Theory. I'm bouncing around between our headquarters office and I do work from home. And then we also have a warehouse. And then my partner, Adria, we get our design inspiration from all over. So we're traveling, we're visiting our stores and we're having team meetings. So every day looks a little different. And that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. You can do whatever you want. Like every day is Friday for me because I could take the day off if I wanted to, but I choose to work most days. So That's awesome. As far as favorite books that you recommend to any entrepreneur in your space? You got any? Yeah. You know, I'm a big podcast person too. I love how I built this. I love hearing inspiring stories and I love your podcast, but I would say my top three traction is a great one. Ways to strengthen your business, the EOS, Blue Ocean Strategy is just a classic, basic. It's if you're starting a business, like how to really position yourself in a unique way where you're differentiated. Story Brand is great for reframing your messaging. Do you like Story Brand? Yes. Yeah, you just named it. What the heck is EOS and and building a story brand are probably my two my two musts. And then the third one is How to Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell. So you named oh. two. Of them. Okay, I need to read that. How to Buy Back Your Time. I like it. Yeah, that's great. No, I, I, um, it's important to continuously learn and whatever method it may be, whether you have a mentor, whether you have a great service provider like you guys, or whether you have podcasts or books, just find ways to learn and grow every day. Yeah. 
Maureen, I'd love to hear from you a story in regards to franchising. When you talk about awarding a franchise, that can be the greatest thing or one of the worst things that you can do as a franchisor because it's up to these people to carry out your brand standards and they're wearing your name, literally your name on the business. So what are some things like good, bad, ugly that you don't mind sharing in regards to the franchising space? Yeah. In terms of finding the right candidate, I mean, it is make or break. And your first 10 stores are going to set the tone, whether you're going to grow or not. And thankfully, our first 10 were very successful and they're still in some of our top 10 sales. Early on, we thought that if someone's passionate about crafting, they're going to be a great owner. But at the end of the day, you're running a business and you're not going to be sitting there painting signs all day long. So you have to make sure that the person is passionate about growing the business and not just the product. We've had stores sell and transfer to a new owner and the new owner takes that store from being a top 10 to the bottom 10 just because of the operator. So um, making sure that they have that mindset, they're good with building a team, they're not trying to do it on their own and they have the resources to do that. You have to have cash flow, you have to have the capital to put back into the business and spend on marketing and those things. And people that are not afraid to spend money to make money. That's awesome. As far as awarding a franchise to an owner operator or having a group come in and own multiple different territories, have you experienced a difference in the quality of that location or of the employees that are awarded to work in those locations based on those two differences? Yeah, we really, I find that individual owner operators that are involved in the community are the best. So Myself, I had four corporate stores and my first store was always the best because that is the community that I live in, that I have connections in. And so I'm a living example that, you know, if you want to succeed, you have to be involved in your local community, know people. It's the best way to grow your business. So when you're stretched too thin um, with our business model specifically, it's it's not going to be as successful as if you just focus on growing the one. So that's just our model. I know some businesses are like buy 10 subways or whatever it may be. But um, for us, it's really hands-on. The customers want to get to know the owner. It's a very personable space. It's entertainment. And so that's that's for us. Most of our owners are individual operators, one store only. Beautiful. And just from my personal experience, when we look at attrition of brands like Smoothie King and Tropical Smoothie, one awards owner operator locations and the other one will let anybody buy a location and or 20 or 40 or 60 and you look at the attrition of both the consumer and the franchisee and it's horrific numbers so i'm really really blessed to hear that you're going down what i believe is the proper path um, yes to greatness and it's providing the same thing across the board a, a stellar product and, and service that's so important exactly yep yeah Maureen, talking about your family, do the boys have any interest in stepping into AR workshop after school? Yeah. So actually, Jeffrey, my oldest, he's 18, but he's been teaching at the workshop, our local flagship store for years, for several years now. Uh, I don't know if he really would want to take over the company, but he he loves design and, and all the little girls at camp love Jeffrey. It's like, oh, is Jeffrey here? It's like, I mean, he's he's definitely a fan favorite. So <laughs> my youngest, though, he's not very interested in, in working yet. He's 15. I'm like, dude, you got to get a job. So I think he's coming around, but we'll see. Jeffrey, my oldest, did start a business this summer doing power washing. So I'm trying to I'm trying to inspire him to start his own business just because I've had so much time freedom with my family by being an entrepreneur. And it's just for me more fulfilling than working at a big corporate company. So I encourage everybody to teach your kids how to start a business, whether it's a lemonade stand or a power washing company or something bigger, because they can do amazing things. No risk when they're little, when they're young. Go Jeffrey, go. Go Jeffrey. (laughs) <laughs> Maureen, wrapping up, I, I got to ask my favorite question. If if you were going to have dinner with a historical figure from the past, who would it be? What are you talking about? And can I come join you? <laughs> oh my gosh. Can they be alive still? Sure. I would say I would, Warren Buffett. I mean, I just think that's kind of a typical answer, but I just think I would love to that's pick the his- first on our show. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I love, I mean, I just, it's so inspiring. You know, I want to learn from the greatest. So what what would be some of the questions that you'd ask Warren? What are some of the biggest risks you've taken? What are some of your biggest mistakes? 
what are your top three tips for finding the best investments? I have so many questions. I don't even know where to begin. That's awesome. Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Maureen, I so appreciate you. Congratulations on all the success and congrats to your franchisees from picking an amazing partner to partner with. And what a great brand. For those of you that didn't hear her the first time, head to arworkshop.com. Check out the nearest location to you. If there's not one, I'm sure Maureen and her team would love to have a conversation about opening one. And we will continue to follow you and, and congrats again on all the success. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you so much. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to head over to our site, local-business-hacks.com to check out the show notes and send me questions or ideas for future episodes. If you want to grow your business, just like the people you've heard from here, follow Local Business Hacks podcast and tune in for new tips, tricks, and tactics. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep hacking.